Apple really surprised everybody by completely overhauling the Mac Mini, giving it a completely new design and the power of the M4 and M4 Pro silicon chips. And after finally seeing it, I honestly think we should be calling this the Mac Micro because it's just 5 by 5 inches. So this thing's going to be perfect for any minimalist setup where a small footprint is prioritized, but at the same time, it's still going to be able to pack some heat when it comes to the specs. Because I mean, honestly, it's very difficult to find anything that even comes close to comparing to the M4 Mac Mini, especially when you're looking at that base model. So let's take a quick look at the specs because Apple is offering the most value that we've seen in a very long time. So for $599, you get the 10 core GPU and 10 core CPU M4 chip. You get 16 gigabytes of memory and 256 gigs of storage. Now by comparison, if you look at the MacBook Air, which is also a great value, especially now that the base model on the Air starts at 16 gigs of memory as well. The 13 inch M3 MacBook Air costs $1099 or $999 if you go with M2. It has an eight core CPU and an eight core GPU and far less IO, which is fair because this thing is meant to be portable. It is a laptop, but a lot of people buy laptops these days just to dock them on their desks anyway. So when you compare these machines side by side, the Mac mini definitely still wins because it has way more upside in terms of the performance and overall productivity. And you might even argue portability as well. I mean, in my opinion, even if you look at the base model for the M4 Pro Mac minis, which comes with 512 gigs of storage, 24 gigs of memory, a better CPU, a better GPU, and the price gets bumped up to $1399, I still find that to be an amazing value as well. Now, rewinding back to the I.O. on the new Mac minis, it's refreshing to see that Apple really didn't hide much behind a paywall this year. I'm so used to them having two completely different chassis depending on how much money you pay, where one is missing a ton of ports and makes you want to bump up to the next one. But in this case, they kept everything relatively the same. So this means on the front, you'll still get those two brand new USB-C ports and a headphone jack. And on the back, you'll get three Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI, and a gigabit ethernet port. Some people are complaining that there's no display port, but oh well. But as we're used to seeing, Apple usually has great value when it comes to those base models, but the second you start to play with your configuration, that's when you start losing money. And as always, if you made it this far in the video, drop two black hearts down in the comments so I can thank you personally. And if you enjoyed this video in any way, shape, or form, maybe you just like the sound of my voice, then feel free to subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out a lot. All right, back to the video. So for example, just to bump that base model up to 512 gigs of storage, it's going to cost you an additional 200 USD. And if you decided to bump up to 24 gigs of memory, it's going to cost you an additional 200 USD as well. Now, as someone who's been running this YouTube channel, my IG and my TikTok exclusively exclusively off of a 2020 MacBook Air, where the only thing that I upgraded was the memory to 16 gigs. I can definitely say that this is why I always tell people that the base model is going to be enough for the majority of you out there. I chug through a ton of 4K 10-bit footage and I rarely have any issues, at least not enough that's ever made me want to actually upgrade. And when you look at that base model Mac mini, not only is it cheaper, but as I said, it also has more IO. So it's going to be the most convenient thing because you don't have to spend so much time worrying about dongles and which ports you do or don't have. Now, in terms of storage, it is important to remember that yes, it's 2024 and Apple's still packaging base models with 256 gigs of storage, but most people these days run everything off of a high-speed SSD anyway. So again, using my MacBook Air as an example, it does have next to no storage, but I bit the bullet and bought myself a Samsung T9, which is a one terabyte external SSD that is extremely fast. So not only am I able to very rapidly transfer all of my data from my camera to the SSD or a separate computer to the SSD, but it's also fast enough that I can edit directly off the SSD when I'm in DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro or whatever have you. And if you're jumping between devices or working with numerous people, it's just easier to have everything on an SSD anyways versus trying to airdrop or Google Drive and all those other things. So again, with Apple offering 512 gigs for $200, you're better off just spending that $200 yourself on an SSD that's gonna net you far more than 512. Now, the memory is gonna be a different story. I think in talking to most people, they know before they buy a computer just how much RAM they actually need. If you're sitting there watching this video and you're like, I don't even know what RAM is, or what RAM does, then chances are 16 gigs is gonna be perfect for you. But if you're someone that knows for sure that 16 isn't gonna be enough for your workflow, then the Mac mini is gonna be a tough sell, at least as far as the base model goes. But in that case, again, with the base model at 599, throwing down an additional 200 to jump that RAM up to 24 gigs really isn't that bad especially if this is a device that you're planning to use a little bit longer term. So overall, I think the base model M4 Mac mini is gonna be a fantastic device for the majority of people, whether you're someone who is a content creator like myself, or maybe you're a student 
or teacher or you just work from home and need something reliable on your desktop that doesn't take up a ton of space, then you're definitely going to be happy with this. Yes, there's going to be some considerations where that base model might not be enough for you, but you're really not going to need much more than that. And for $599, like what more could you ask for? That is, of course, assuming that you already have your peripherals like a monitor, a keyboard and a mouse. But anyway, my base model M4 Mac mini order is in. So if you're interested in seeing the performance and how this thing holds up with my workflow, make sure to get yourself subscribed. And as always, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will do my best to get back to you. But that's pretty much it for me. Much love as always. Throwing up two of them and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.